Well, top of the morning to you. Today's video is going to be land-based. Uh, yesterday we had a tournament. It was it's a fun event. Uh, Big-eyed, crappy man tournament. Uh, pretty fun. Uh, Church-oriented. Great, great, great base. Uh, good people there, too. Good people. It was a fun event. I uh, fished with Anthony and um, had a great time. So, today's video, land-based. Uh, the past two times, I had starter trouble. Well, battery starting trouble. My cranking battery. Turns out, it was five years old. But, five years? That's awesome to get that kind of lifetime. So, I went back to what I had and what I've been using. But let me say this. Johnson Control makes almost every battery out there interstate uh autozone advance walmart uh, you name it they probably make it there's there's uh two other companies that make batteries that's not made by johnson control so what you need to pay attention to on your batteries are cranking amps the batteries i like to use that i've had success with you know not a sales pitch just reality is Duralast and this particular battery had is a 29 series the old one was 27 so 29 is going to have a little more power 840 cranking amps which is more than the other 210 reserved amp capacity reserve capacity what that is is that's the amount of time that you can run stuff so what I do with my cranking battery is I have, of course, my cranking leads, which goes to the starter. It runs to the switch, and then that runs back to the starter. So I've got that on there, and then I've got my accessories. I've got my bilge pump, my lights, my aerator. So I've got that on there, and the results of that over here let me show you is see all this when you take them apart you got your your rings here your connector rings to to eliminate confusion I take a little uh, bread tie twist tie and twist them all together I know that this is negative I know this is positive and then there's of course the big ones which I can tell hey black that's negative red or dirty red that's that's positive so today's video what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut strip solder these connections together use a big ring connector and such as this put them all together twist them together get them together solder that into one unit slide it in here which just made for uh, I believe a six gauge wire crimp it and then solder that to the connection uh, I'm a firm believer in solder and shrink wrap when it comes to wire connections there's those out there saying well according to such and such yeah those crimps are the way to go but you know i i i've had situations where that crimp didn't necessarily hold that well i like to solder and shrink wrap so i'm gonna clean that up i was considering doing this with the positive leads to my electronic units and this goes this little guy which is why it was so little but that's the way it came with the boat this one goes to the boat uh the switch panel so i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave these three separate right now because i'm afraid of interference if i join my two units with this uh, so I think it'll be fine joining the the leads to that to the 
to the negative because as long as it's a ground, it's a ground, I, I believe. So, but these three, and I've got my fusible links here. Uh, so with these fuses here, uh, if I put them together, I, I, there just might be set some issues with interference on my electronics. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I've got my other Duralast batteries. I've got 229 series that are designated just for my trolling motor, which is a 24-volt trolling motor, Ultrex, Minnecota Ultrex. So that's what I'm going to do. But um, again, Johnson Controls makes almost all of them. Yeah, my boat's a mess. Sorry about that. Um, so, batteries. You, you get in, you unhook. The first thing I do, I've got my charger maintainers right here. This looks like spaghetti too. But I plug them up, and then I plug into my power cord. I've got a little three-way pigtail, and I'll plug that into my extension cord. So, there we go. Um... I'll show you little processes, updates, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks, folks. Okay, here's something else what I'm going to be using. Uh, wire strippers, crimpers, and also the crimp the big boy might use this. Uh, wire cutters, and a soldering kit. This old school solder iron or solder gun. And I'll be using some shrink wrap uh, big enough to go over the connectors. You put it over your wires and then slide it back away from the heat because if you solder that, sometimes the, the heat will actually shrink wrap. It'll shrink the shrink wrap before you can, sli can slide it up on the wire. So, you know, try to slide it back as far as you can. And I may even be doing some smaller shrink wrap on each individual wire just to eliminate uh, any uh, electrical interference. But yeah, just try and take all the precautions I can. All right. Okay, here's another little tip. Sounds silly, but go ahead and count your wires and make sure that all those just do one at a time uh, use your little wire tie and connect all the negative together then connect all the positive together one step at each time so I've stripped my wires and I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to solder but you know go ahead and count them that way you're not mistaken and why didn't my bilge pump work why don't my lights turn on you know if you just do it one step at a time, count your wires. Oh, I, I'm only got four soldered wires. Where's the fifth one at? Yeah, then you look. Yeah, just trying to eliminate mistakes for everybody. Uh, it's a shame that lessons cost, but they do. So luckily, I had enough forethought to count my wires, and I've stripped them, prepped them, and we're getting ready to solder up. Thank you. Okay, I've cut my wires. I just wanted to show y'all this is not a tutorial on soldering. Otherwise, it'd be somebody else doing it. But if you see here, there's two types of solder. Uh, bad solder, which is called cold solder, which is just globbed on, melted uh, uh, material of solder. Uh, use flux and solder that is just globbed on and then there's the proper good solder which you should be able to look at a wire like this and you pull the heat from the bottom on thinner materials pull it from the bottom and melt it from the top then go around all sides you should be able to see each individual strand so the solder itself is actually pulled into the center of the wire fusing the whole multiple wires together as one solid connection. Okay, folks, I've done a, a dry fit. I 
took my five wires just to count them. One, two, three, four, five. Five. I've got all five that I started with. Uh, sounds simple, but man, it, it, it stops you from making mistakes. So I'm doing a dry fit. So I'm going to put them in here, and I'll be dropping a little bit of solder right down here in this connection so it fuses through this actually i'll crimp it first and then solder it but i'm just doing a dry fit and i think this is going to clean up my battery post connection from spaghetti to a little bit neater i'll still have this connection and my uh starter starter switch cable connection together on on there but it'll be so much easier that i have this negative connection to my battery post and my and my starter lead versus five of these and my starter it was just so many o-rings and if you ever have to disconnect or remove your battery this is just going to be so much more easier okay just trying to help y'all out hopefully y'all can take this and run with it uh if you see where something i could do that improved what i did uh this is all trial and error uh, i work grew up working on volkswagens whether they were broke or not so um you know this is this is what i know if y'all have any anything more that can help me out let me know um you know suggestions thoughts what you guys do for your boats for your electronics that um you know maybe somebody will read your comments and take that and run that's what it's all about sharing the passion sharing the knowledge sharing the skills thank you for joining me on chip o fishing okay folks so this is the final results i've got my five rings reduced to one got them uh all organized and combined combined uh heat shrink put on there put some flux here on the end and on the wires um uh, was able to drop some solder balls in here heat them up and have them go down into the wires into the wire connections which is soldered in themselves uh, got a really good crimp on it and then filled it all with solder and heated it up so that it would run down did that several times i have a good solid connection of soldered solid uh wire and solder right here in the end of the terminal um so between that and my cranking lead these will be the only two on my cranking battery. This will run all my accessories, bilge pump, live well, uh, two fish finders, and lights. Okay, folks. Thanks again for joining me on Chippo Fishing. Um, I appreciate you out here. Uh, I'm just out here trying to share passion, knowledge, and skills that I've learned and that I'm still learning and i was just passing on so y'all go fishing when you can it's so good for the soul and get up off that couch you know you can't catch them there peace